Hi, this is Gary with MacPost.com. Here are some tips for getting the most out of lists in Pages. So in Pages, you can create lists, both bulleted lists and numbered lists. To create a list, you can select some text that already exists, like these five lines here. And then you can go to the Format sidebar under Style, and all the list options are at the bottom. If you don't see all these options here, just click the little Reveal button next to Bullets and Lists. Now you can select one of the many styles here, like for instance, Bullet List, and now you get bullets here next to the items that were selected. But you don't actually need to do that. You can automatically create lists by just typing. So if you were going to manually create a list, you would put a bullet first. A bullet character is option eight on US keyboards, and then a space, and then you would type. Now, when you do this and press return, it automatically converts what you typed to a list. You saw the indent changed a little bit, and also the next line now includes a bullet. Now you can just type and press return, and it will add new items with bullets next to them automatically. It doesn't have to be bullets either. For instance, there are dashed lists. So if I just type a dash and then something and then press return, it converts that to a dashed list. And now I could just type each item like that. And the same thing with numbered lists. A typical numbered list starts with one and then period and then a space. If you do that and then press return, it'll convert that to a numbered list and you can see how it automatically put two there and will continue. Now, in addition to being able to create lists automatically just by typing the right things, you can also stop a list automatically. So if you get to the end of a list and you don't want to continue to the next item, just press return a second time. Instead of inserting a new line, it will just take that as a signal to stop the list and give you a regular line next for you to type something on. By the way, if you like these videos, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, when you have a list like this, you may want to indent some of the lines. In other words, this may not be five items, but three items, and these two are sub-items under the first one. To do that, you can click here with the number or bullet and drag to the right like that. But you could also do it with just the keyboard. If you look under format and then text, you'll see increase indent level and decrease indent level as command and then the square brackets. So command and right square bracket will indent and then command and left square bracket will outdent. So you could do that with multiple lines by selecting say two lines here, command and right bracket, command, and left bracket. But you could also just use the tab key, which is kind of what comes naturally. So with the selected, I can press tab, and you can see the indent, shift tab will outdent. This is even more natural when typing. So here I've got the first line of a list, and this is supposed to be a sub item. So I will just tab to go in, and then type, and then it will stay at that level. And then when I wanna go back out, I do shift tab to go back out, and I type and it will stay at that level as well. Now I've already shown that you can use bullets and dashes for lists. I could select these lines here and you can see there are a few other options. For instance, there's a bullet big right here, but you also could just go down here and note that when you use one of these, what it's really doing is setting this to text bullets and then setting up the properties below. And here's the bullet. I could click here and then select other characters as bullets, like for instance, this star or this special character or a little triangle like that. But this is a text wheel. I can actually type in this. So I can make it anything I want. For instance, if I want the letter Q to be a bullet, I can just type a Q in here, press return, and you can see the bullets are now Qs. I can even include multiple characters in here. So for instance, if I wanted to use two greater than symbols, I can, it'll put more than one character there, but you could also use special characters there. So I'm going to use control command space to bring up the emoji and special character viewer. And I can choose all sorts of special characters, emoji characters, symbols, and everything. 
So for instance, I can just choose a little face like this and return, and you can see it's using the emoji character there. This is useful because there are actually a lot of special Unicode characters that can be used as great bullets. So you can search for those if you happen to know the name of it. So for instance, if I search for Arrowhead, I get like a character like this, and I can use that as a bullet. Now, if you happen to use a special character and find that it's a little bit too big or too small, you do have the size property right here. So if I wanna make something a little bigger, maybe make it 110% to increase the size, or smaller, maybe 60%. And no matter what you choose, you may find that the item doesn't completely line up with the text on the right. So you can use the align property here. I'm going to drop it down negative one, and now it looks a little more centered. I'd also note you could change the color so it's just regular black right now, but I can make it a different color, like blue, like that. Now, another thing you could do is adjust the indentation. So this is done here with indent. The first property will actually move the entire bullet and text. And the second one is the space between the bullet and text. These steps can be a little large, so sometimes you're better off actually typing in here, like I'll do 0.2 inches. I can use command and right bracket to indent these two, and I can make a different adjustment here. I can make this go further in, for instance, or have a different amount of space between the bullet and the text, and it will just affect what I've selected here. It doesn't affect the other lines that aren't selected. But note, you could also get away from text completely by using images. So I'm gonna use image bullet here, and then I get the current image shown here, I can select from a variety of different images that are built into pages. So for instance, this gold star. But I could also choose any image I want. For instance, I have an image file here, something I just created on my own. I can click here and click custom image. And then I could drag this in and open it. And now you could see it's using my custom image there. And if it's not quite the right size, like before I could resize it, I could reset the alignment and everything. Now, when dealing with numbered lists, you actually have a lot of different options. For instance, just look at the main styles here. You've got numbered, you've got lettered, you've got Roman numerals, for instance. If you have numbers selected here, you can actually select all these different styles here. You also have something called tiered numbers. So this is if you've got, say, some lines indented like that. And now I'm gonna select it all. I'm gonna turn on tiered numbers. And what'll happen is I get numbers like 1.1, 1.2, and so on. And you could select lots of different things here. Let's do letters, for instance, and you could see how that goes. If I wanted to, I could select just these two lines here and change these to just numbers. And you could see now I get A.1 and A.2. Now, another thing you may want to do is have lists that continue after a break. For instance, here I'm going to go to the next line and then press return again to stop the numbered list. And then I'm going to type some regular text. Now, let's say I want to continue the numbered list here. It doesn't work if I just type, say, the next number and then something like that. It won't pick up that that's a list because I'm not starting with one. So what I'm gonna do instead is start with one and then continue the list. So what I'm gonna do is select just the first line. I'm just gonna put the cursor in there. And then under bullets and lists, there's an item here where I can continue from previous or start from. So for this line only, I'm gonna say start from six. And now I get six, seven, and eight. So this line is start from six. The next line is continue from previous. Just like here, automatically I had this one is start from one, and then every other line is continue from previous. Now let's say I've customized a list quite a bit. I'm using a special bullet character here with a special color. I've indented the text, set an alignment. Now let's say I wanna use that in other places as well. So let's say I start another list here. I'm gonna just use a dash just to get started and type out my list. Now I want this list to look like this list. You may already know that you've got paragraph styles and character styles in pages, but a third type of style is list style. So I'm gonna select this list and then I'm gonna go down here to where there are these predefined styles. And I'm going to click the plus button here to create my own. So I'm gonna call it my list here. You can call it whatever you want. And now you can see I've got this special list. It even shows me kind of what it looks like. So now I can select this list here and I can now select the styles, go to my list and it will make it match this list. Better still, let's say I've created 30 different lists throughout a hundred different pages of my book. 
I can go to this first list here and make a change. Let's say I want this to be green and I want it to be slightly bigger, for instance. So I can click here and then click update. And this will update the style, which means everywhere else the style is used, it will update those lists. So watch the second list as I click update. You could see it updates there as well. If there were 28 other lists, they would all update. So I have one last tip for you, and that's creating a completely custom list that can't be defined by changing any of the values here. For instance, let's say you want a list that looks like this, but you don't want that second period it may look like there's no way to actually get that. Well, it's important to remember that bullets and lists, really it's misnamed. It shouldn't be bullets and lists. It should be automatic bullets and lists because that's what it's doing. It's automatically creating these for you. If you want to manually create them and do anything you want, you can. The first thing I would do in that case is go to pages settings and go to auto correction and turn off automatically detect lists. So now when you type something like this, it's not going to automatically convert it to a list. It's just regular text. So I can just continue to type and put whatever I want. If the next line is supposed to be 2.1, I can tab to go in, type 2.1, and then a space or an additional tab and type whatever I want here. It's gonna be up to me to define each line. So I'm gonna to have to tab in here, do 2.2 and all of that, and then here, might be the next line like that. So you can see how I could build whatever I want. I can select these and go to view and then show rulers. And here's where I can set tabs. So I can do the indentation if I want. So I can get really creative. It means I have to manually define each number. And if I wanna insert something here, I now actually have to go and change all of these to match. So it's not a matter of pages restricting you to only doing certain types of lists and you can't go outside of that. It's just that pages has the ability to automatically do certain types of lists, but you can do anything else you want by manually typing exactly the characters you want to see. So if you use lists in pages, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.